We're starting a new book of the Bible. And we're starting a new part of the Bible. And we're starting a new part of God's story. So what we need to do is not forget the bit that we were learning last term, but we need to work out how this new bit fits in with all the stuff we were doing. So does anyone remember what we were doing last term? What book were we looking at? Seamus? Genesis, well done. And do you remember who was the person we were talking about? Millie? Jacob? Do you remember what his other name was? Do you remember Levi? Or Joe, do you remember? He was also called? Israel. Israel, that's right. So we were learning about the, the people of Israel, how God in Genesis, he's made the world, he chose his special people, he chose a family, he made promises to Abraham, Abraham's son, the promise went to Isaac, the promise went to Jacob. Jacob was also called Israel and Jacob had lots of sons. Do you remember how many sons he had? Twelve. Twelve, twelve, twelve. That's right, twelve. So, and he put them in the land. He promised them a land and they were living eventually in this place that he promised them. And they spread out and the twelve sons lived in different parts and they all had their own area and that was named after them. So there was an area called Simeon or an area called Benjamin. That's right. So the different tribes, they all lived together. So now we're going to look through the Bible, the Old Testament, we look at the history of those people, how they lived in the land, what happened to them. They did the right thing sometimes, they did the wrong thing sometimes. God sent them messengers to tell them what to do. He sent them people called prophets to give them his message. And they lived in that land that they were. So, And they had a city, the capital city of their area. Does anyone know what it was called? That was a J. Oh, close. Yes, Jerusalem, that's right. So they had a capital city called Jerusalem. And in Jerusalem, they had a special building. Do you have any idea what that building might be called? Really? God's house, yeah, it was God's house. The temple, that's right, so in Jerusalem. So the God's people are living in this place. They've got a temple. And that is the place that God lives with them, and that's where he talks to them. So they have special people, the Levites, the people from the tribe of Levi are the priests and they're the ones that look after the temple and the temple is where God lives. So that's where you go to talk to God. If you wanted to talk to God in those days, you couldn't just do what we can do, have God living in us like the Holy Spirit. He lived in the temple and people would go there to talk to him. So what I've done for you on your kid sheets, because we're looking at the whole Bible a little bit today because we're moving on to a new book, is we've got a bit of a history of what happens and how the Bible all fits together. Because the Bible all fits together like a puzzle and tells us one big story. So what we've just talked about is coming through here. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, they're all living in the promised land. They've got kings, they build a temple, everything's going well, but then what happens? The Babylonians attack. Well, they attack part of it. They, the kingdom splits. You see this that black line? And I want you all to go home and read this and talk about it with your parents. The northern kingdom, the Assyrians invade, destroy the northern kingdom. The southern kingdom, the Babylonians invade. And the Babylonians don't just destroy their land and destroy the temple, but they destroy everything and they take the people away. So people don't live in this land that God's promised them anymore. They're taking the people away. They take them off to Babylon. So the Israelites, the people of God, his special chosen people, are not living in their place anymore. They're not living where they should be. They don't live in Jerusalem where they have a temple anymore. They've been taken off to Babylon. So and they lived there for about 70 years until in one of the readings that we just heard, they get sent back. They get sent back to their land. And that is the point that we're going to look at for the beginning of term four. They've gone back to their land. They're living there, but they've gone back and everything is destroyed. It's hard. They've got to rebuild their houses. People haven't lived there for seven years. They don't know about how to live there. They have to fix it up. And one of the things they have to fix up is the temple. So as soon as they go back, they build the foundations for the temple, but then they kind of run out of steam. They think, you know what, we're going to build our houses. We're going to try and plant some crops. We're going to try to get this society going again, and they forget that they're supposed to build the temple. Now, all through the history, when God wants to tell his people something, he sends them special people, and the special people are called prophets. So what we're going to read over the next few weeks 
is the words of one of the special people that God sent to his people, one of the prophets called Haggai. Weird name. Very glad none of you are called Haggai because it's a bit of a kind of strange name. I don't, I don't know about you. Maybe you love it. But anyway, we're going to look at all the words that he said to the, to the people of God. And he's reminding them, guys, you need to rebuild the temple. Guys, you need to do what God says. You need to listen to him. He needs to be the most important part of your world again. So he's going to tell them to rebuild the temple. He's going to tell them to follow God. He's going to tell them what God wants them to do now that they've come back to their land and they're living there. So that's important. So we're going to read the book of Haggai. You might not have heard of that book before, but that's the point in God's in the history that we're at. Now it's good to look forward in the history too because things don't end when the people come back and rebuild the temple. Things keep on going and eventually we don't need the temple anymore, do we? Because who, who do we have instead? Jesus, that's right. So the people of God in their time, what they need to do is rebuild the temple because that's a special sign that God is living with them. But I want you to remember that that's that time, but we can keep going and reading the history of God and you can keep reading the Bible and you can know that Jesus came and that he has replaced the temple. So we don't need the temple anymore, but in that day and age, the Jewish people, they did need the temple. So it's a complicated story and there's a lot going on, but we've got to do a few things to try to remember where the book of Haggai fits in the Bible. We're going to remember how the Bible as a whole fits together and we're going to learn about what Haggai said to the Israelites and what we can learn from that too because when God says something, there's always something for us to learn. So we can learn from Haggai too. So what you're going to do, you've got a little puzzle. That's a picture of the temple. It's not a great picture of the temple, but it's fine. So you can colour that in and then you can cut on the lines. And it's like a jigsaw puzzle. So you can put the temple back together again and remember that that's what God was telling his people to do. There is a new memory verse because we've moved on to a new, a new book of the Bible. So here's your new memory verse. So everyone take this home with them. Stick it on your wall or stick it on your fridge and you can start learning it. So in a few weeks' time, I'm sure you will all know it by then. So we can start learning that together. There is a word search about some of the things that are going to happen in the book of Haggai over the next few weeks. So I know some of you love a word search, so you can find them. But there's also another page, a little page with a cross on it with lots of words on it. So some of you can read and some of you can't. So for the people who can read... That's got a list of all the books of the Bible in it. So what we're going to do, today we just had a few different readings and you had to jump around from one bit to another and you had to find different books. Sometimes it's helpful to know where the books fit in together. So then you can have your own little bookmark to tell you all the books of the Bible. It's got the Old Testament on the front, the New Testament books on the back. And do you know, when I was about eight or nine, which some of you are about that age, one of the things I did in Sunday school was I tried to memorise the order of the books of the Bible. We had a song that we made up about it and we tried to memorise it. And I still, when I have to turn to say, when we went to Kings, I say, Kings 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, 1 Kings, 2 Kings. So I can find it in the Bible really quickly. So if you want to try and memorise the books of the Bible, that's a good thing to do, but otherwise you've got your own bookmark. So you can colour it in, put some nice pictures on it and then cut it out and take that home with you and put it in your Bibles or in whatever book you're reading. So... Let's pray together now before Frankie gets too upset. Do you want to pray with us, Frankie? Yeah, good idea. Let's pray together and then we can all go and do our sheets. And if anyone does try and memorise the books of the Bible, come and tell them to me later and I'll give you a special prize. Maybe next week or the week after. It might take you a while. Okay, let's go. Dear God, thank you for the Bible. Thank you that there are so many books in the Bible and from each one of them we can learn something different. Thank you for the book of Haggai and that we are going to learn something from it today. Thank you, God, that through a big history, you are always faithful to your promises. And thank you that we can read about the history of Israel and see how you were faithful to them and kept looking after them. Please help us all to listen in church and to learn something from you and help us all this week to keep on reading our Bibles and praying and to love you more and more each day. Amen.